Hi, my name is Jason, and we are here at Slow Brew in downtown San Luis Obispo, getting ready to interview David and Victor from Camper Van Beethoven. Guys, thank you so much for being with us tonight and, and talking with us. We're here at Slow Brew in downtown San Luis Obispo, and um, I wanted to talk to you both about the history of the band. We're coming up on almost 30 years uh, of the band being in existence, and uh, in those three decades, I mean, what are some of the memories that stand out in terms of uh, some of the other artists that maybe you've performed with on stage or just other memories from the past? Um, I don't know, it's a lot, it's a lot. So I think a lot one, of, one of the most important ones for us was uh, REM, like fairly early on. I mean, we in 86, after we had two albums out, they took us out on tour on their Life's Rich Pageant, I think, tour? Yeah, Life's, Life's Rich Pageant. Pageant tour, um, which, you know, that was, that was a good tour to be on. Yeah. They were really kind of happening, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, we were sort of used to playing in, you know, college town bars like this and stuff like that. You know, it was a little bit of a transition for us to step up to, like, you know, playing hockey arenas and stuff like that, you know. But it was cool and we had a good time and, you know, that, that was an important thing for us. Well, I actually used to live in Goleta, and I know you guys had a, a song about Goleta, and I always, it always kind of left an impression in my mind. What, uh, have you guys had any experience in playing in Goleta or living there? Or? Uh, no, I played there, but it's been a long time. I think, you know, we went to, we went to UC Santa Cruz, okay. yeah. so there's just like a healthy rivalry is yeah, the well, best way to explain just, it. You know, uh, you know. Screw the gauchos, man. You yeah, guys, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, because there's no, there aren't rich kids at UC Santa Cruz. It's all yeah, just a very egalitarian kind of <laughs> communist state. And, yeah, uh, no grades, right? You see, no, no grading system. Completely, you know. I mean, and we're superior. Yeah. That you are. That you are, my friend. I was telling you that I, I used to uh, drive around listening to Telephone Free, Landslide Victory, and I personally think that one of the best albums of the late '80s is Our Beloved Revolutionary Sweetheart, an album that I just adore. What are some of the the albums or songs that you know you have fans come up and, and tell you that uh, really meant something to them uh, when they were in their formative years? Um, the first record and Key Lime Pie a lot. I get Key Lime Pie all the time. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. Some people really have. You know, some people really like two and three because they say that's like the most authentic Camper record because it's so weird. It was very eccentric, very eclectic, I guess. Right? Yeah. yeah. And and just and really opaquely recorded. You could never really tell exactly what's going on on that record. Was that the one where you guys did Interstellar Overdrive and you were doing some other covers? The third record. Okay. Just the record, just called Camper Van Beethoven. Okay. Victor and um, Dave, I want to ask you guys about your musical influences. You know, be, when you were uh, first starting out in Santa Cruz, I mean, what were some of the other artists, some of the other performers that, that inspired you to become musicians? Well, you know, we grew up outside of L.A., so... Oh, yeah. in, the, in the Empire. In the Empire. Sort of out towards the desert. Okay. So, yeah. L.A. punk rock is kind of how we met. Yeah. You, know. you guys used to go to old germ shows and, and uh, stuff I like went, that? I only went to the last germ show, because they were, by the time I had discovered them, they were going to break up. Yeah. Uh, but... X, the Blasters, Black Flag, nice. you know, and then like things from the north like Dead Kennedys and, uh, you know, Flipper. Yes, yes. You know, and then a lot of British bands because that's what was cool at the time. The Fall was Football, a big influence yeah. on us. Yeah. But then we also, but at the same time, we were digging back into all of this like West Coast early psychedelia mixed up with the hillbilly stuff. Like, and in particular, there's a group called Kaleidoscope that came out, also came out of the Inland Empire okay. where we were from. <laughs> And, you know, things like the Chocolate Watch Band, who are Northern California, or the Count Five, or We the People, the Pop Experiment, the Art, what was it, the Experimental Pop Art Ensemble, yeah. um, like weird underground stuff you never heard of. And it was just stuff that we learned from, like, digging through, like, the used record bins at, at places like Rhino Records and stuff like that in L.A. And, like, yeah. old, like, high-fidelity type, you know, record store clerks going, uh, no, no, you got to listen to this, man, you know. Just spend $5 <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the can record. You'll yeah. enjoy there it. There you go, yeah. there you go. Well, I was going to say, you guys early on really incorporated strings and, and, and a lot of varied instruments. And I had read somewhere that, um, you know, take the skinheads bowling and that, that early on, it, maybe being in that Southern California kind of punk influence scene, that Camper Van Beethoven, very unique in that scene in terms of no other bands really that were similar. But that's why we got thrown on with so many different bands and why we had... I mean, we did just kind of come out of punk rock. That's really yeah. where we came out of. But we wound up playing, you know, with everything from like the Blasters to the Dead Kennedys to, you know, I mean, it just, and it just, but that's how that scene was. Well, you know, well, one of the things was is that, you know, we did play punk rock and that's, but, you know, we weren't getting much attention doing that. We weren't really any different than anybody. It was only after we started just going, you know what, 
we're going to do our own thing here, that then, uh, oddly, then the punk rock scene embraced us, right? I mean, what, some of our first, our earliest breaks were um, like, was uh, Jell Biafra from the Dead Kennedys and East Bay Ray putting us on Dead Kennedy shows, oh, wow. where we literally were in danger of being killed at times, yeah. you know, because we're like, who are these hippies? I mean, we were fake hippies. They're like, who are these hippies? What are they doing? And, um, you know, then like the Meat Puppets embraced us. The Minuteman, we're all, we were always playing with the Minuteman oh, awesome. and stuff yeah, like that. Watts playing here, I think, uh, this next month. So, yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah and like Husker Du, all, yeah. all these yeah. bands. A lot of bands, strangely, that I'm, people I'm still in touch with, you know, awesome. people I still see. So we weren't really a punk rock band, but we got embraced by all those people, and they're the people who gave us the break, right? And but and, and even like we like we weren't punk rock enough for, you know, SST Records, but you know Ray Farrell, who was doing promotion for them at the time, we just had to start our own label, right? The the SST's promotion guy just gave us his list of radio stations and addresses. You know, back in those days, there weren't computers and stuff like that. So I went to his office and copied his Rolodex down longhand. And um, that's where we mailed our records. It was his list. Yeah. Wow. Very DIY, uh, DIY, as they say. Well, always. Yeah. We're yeah. always, you know, I mean, I try and explain to people. It's like when we first toured, we got across the country without a cell phone. You know, it's like a network of people, you know, and people would tell us, without you know, you want to see, yeah, without it, yeah. Just, just sleeping in, sleep it's like these. Henry Rollins' van stories of these living out of the van. the house where you can sleep, and this is the record store to play, and this is, you know, this is the ra radio station you want to talk to. And it was all completely network mm -hmm. for the first couple of years. So, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, here we are 30 years later, and I wanted to talk about the, uh, some, uh, upcoming developments in terms of some new releases from Camper Van Beethoven. Uh, January 22nd, uh, there's a new album slated to come out. Could you give us a little uh, hint about what to expect on that album? It's, um, I think in a way, it's it covers what Camper has always covered. It's a little, maybe a little more, uh, we, we have a real California theme for this album, so we called it La Costa Perdida, Perdida. so like the Lost Coast, um, sort of about sort of this lost, like, California, like, I, I don't know how to exactly to describe it, but it touches on all the stuff that we always done. It's a little like, you know, hippie-ish stuff, a little ska stuff, a little, uh, you know, Norteño sort of feel to some of it, a little country, and uh, yeah. I've heard some people talk about the, the, the the trail that you guys blazed. I mean, some people talk about, you know, Calexico and kind of the Southwest influence and that you guys were kind of a trailblazer for some of that. Um, Gogol Bo Bordello and I mean, just some of the, you know, almost Eastern sounding uh, artists that are kind of representing today. Um, do you see uh, little seeds of uh, camper band Beethoven and any contemporary artists that are out there today? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, um, well, I, you know, I, it's, it's always hard to tell who listened to us and who didn't, but um, you know, really, or if they were sort of indirectly influenced. But you know, you, all, you always have people like uh, Doug March from Built to Spill, Isaac Brock from Modest Mouse, you know, the Decemberists, you know, who cite Camper Van Beethoven as being a, a big influence for them. Um, I, I, you know, I hear it there, here and there. Yeah, I mean, we kind of made the world safe for doing folky stuff in rock and psychedelic stuff in rock. How about you, Victor? Do you hear any uh, rumblings out there of contemporary artists that, that cite uh, Camper Van Beethoven? You know, I mean, I just, I work in kind of the tech world by day, and uh, what's interesting is that, you know, I'm constantly getting people coming up, it's like, you're in that band? You know, and then there's like kind of two interesting kind of things that happen. It's like, yeah. you have to work a day job? It's like, yes. And why are, why are you working in tech? And it's like, I went to school at Santa Cruz. Yeah. You know, I mean, you need to be ashamed of that. Yeah. No, it's just all kind of like this natural progression. But you know, among among that group, the band really, you know, people grew up on us, and and it, you know, I mean, I think that's that's great. You know, I, it's nice to be cited. You know. Definitely, definitely. And David, uh, you know, in terms of, I think you have one of the most distinctive voices in all of, all of rock and roll history. I mean, with Beethoven and with with Cracker. I mean, you just when you hear David's voice, I mean, there, there's nobody else it could be. And I think as a singer, that's a really um, nice thing, that when you sing, people know that it's you and they don't confuse you with any other people out there. But um, just had to compliment you on that. Wonderful voice. Thank you. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. I never thought I was. But I, I heard the, I mean, how I became a singer was I used to be the bass player in bands and then I wanted to play guitar and I just started singing. And I always thought, you know, I always heard the kinks and I was like, man, 
you know, if Ray and Dave Davies can be lead singers, I can be a lead singer because there's something not traditionally correct about their voices either. Exactly. And, 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 and you mentioned uh, Doug Marsh and, and Isaac Brock, both of whom have kind of unusual, you know, Isaac has kind of a lisp, Doug has kind of an interesting inflection. So I could see, you know, even people like Calvin Johnson, K Records, I, I can see the, the influence there that maybe you, you opened up a whole world for people that, uh, you know, maybe never thought that they had a, a good singing voice. Well, well, thank you. I mean, I, I hope I did. I hope I did. The Kirkwood Brothers. Okay. He sings nicer than the Kirkwood Brothers. Yeah. Okay. And I like their singing. Okay. Okay. So. And you sing backup vocals, right, Victor, on some of the songs? All the time. Yeah. So, so you have a lovely voice too. And I'm well, you know, thank you. Yeah. Guys, thanks again. We're really looking forward to seeing you perform here in San Luis Obispo. And we encourage folks to go to the website, um, check out your Facebook page, and also uh, stay tuned for the new album coming out uh, January 22nd. So thanks again, guys, for your thanks time. For time. Thank, you. Thank you.